Good afternoon, I'm Mark Wright. We are monitoring protests sparked by the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. In fact, across the country as we speak, there are some form of riots going on in many different cities. All of this, of course, being sparked by the death of George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Essentially, um, his advocates say murdered by a police officer who knelt on his neck for almost nine minutes. Three of those minutes, George Floyd was unresponsive. Three other officers simply stood by and did nothing. The officer who knelt on George Floyd's neck has now been charged with murder. Those charges came yesterday um, in Minneapolis, St. Paul. This is, this is not uh, a good scene in downtown Seattle. We do have two crews covering the situation. We're hearing more flashbangs, and as you can see, you can see tear gas is being unleashed in that area. This is, uh, this is uh, a situation that I'm sure that Seattle police were hoping wouldn't happen. But if you're familiar with Seattle history, if you're familiar with Seattle protesting, you know that things like this have happened in the past, especially around May Day. And here are protesters who are just overtly causing damage to police cars. We're hoping that things will calm down, but it looks like things are only getting worse at this point. We're trying to establish contact with one of our reporters down there. Let's see if Michael Crow can hear us. Michael, it's Mark Wright in the studio. Can you hear us? Yeah. Michael, go ahead. Tell us what you know. Hey guys, we're in a kind of stuff right now. We're coughing a lot. Last thing's going on when I assume to be tear gas. I still cannot see the line with SPD from where we are. So as far as I can tell, I can see it in the other direction, about two blocks up where they blocked the road. But as far as I can see, not an SPD officer in sight in this section of downtown Seattle as SPD cruisers burn. Uh, the interesting thing is we were just listening to Andre Taylor talk a couple minutes ago as he and several pastors that were there for the organized event asked people not to commit acts of vandalism tonight. Uh, they were asking people to be peaceful uh, in sharing the message of protest tonight. And as we can see, uh, at least a group has decided not to, to heed that advice. That is not a firework. This guy's gonna walk up and try to extinguish this. throw more on it. Yeah, this is an unbelievable uh, scene in downtown Seattle. It does not the look fire like just turned on the bright city on van. And we're just hearing that Seattle police have just tweeted that they are not going to go in and put these fires out. Probably too dangerous for first responders at this point because we, we can't even see where the officers are at this point. There are so many protesters around and uh, where the police are at this point, we don't know. Uh, we've been seeing people throwing trash cans into the windows trying to make their way in shattering windows. There's a guy with a skateboard right there, his face covered on the left that just broke another window as we were watching there. That is what we're seeing right now. The, the cars continue to burn, these SPD cruisers. Uh, the smoke is drifting down the way here as it drizzles and, and people are just, just beating the living heck out of the windows around these businesses. These are all broken. You can see right here, just shattered glass on the ground. This is a Verizon wireless. I think it just happened around the corner here again. We're not going to get too terribly close here. If Mike can give us a look here. That woman in the tan was just... Watch the guitar, watch the guitar. We are still here. We're trying to not get in the way here. Take a look right here. Come around the corner, Mike. Yeah, people are just...
certainly never seen anything like this, but people are breaking into the Verizon. They're throwing firecrackers. There's a person in a full gas mask right here to the left. The car alarm just stopped on those burning SPD cruisers that the horn was stuck on. And you can see as the right, we've got police in armor here. And what looked to be, I think that's a, a gas gun. Watch this guy. Oh, hey, Mike, Mike, watch this guy with the gun. He's playing. You see that officer with the tear gas gun telling people to back up. And we are going to move to the side here. He's telling this one guy to get out of here, but that guy's not listening. He's moving up on him. This is escalating. We're seeing people clash with the police to our right, to our right. They're shoving. Oh. Somebody appears to be getting detained. I can't tell. It's too many folks. Oh, oh my. Look, we just heard something secondary ignite. I don't know what that is, but it sure looks like it has fuel. Do you see... I don't think that's a gas tank. It could be. Certainly, there, there's more ignitions happening in these cars as they continue to burn. Those flames have only gotten larger. We saw a minute where it really had some power behind it and was kind of jetting out the side. That could have been a gas tank. To the front! So SPD is reaching the corner of Olive and this road that we're standing on with the burning vehicles. It looks like they're getting ready to make the turn here. People are throwing bottles and things at them. That was a tire or a firework, I think. This guy in the green jacket is, is really getting up in this officer's face, and the officer is really hitting him with that bike, pushing back. Oh, and there's the pepper spray. They just dropped a bunch of pepper spray right point blank. Here he comes. Look out, look out, look out, look out. He just took that full in the face. Look out, look out, look out. And he's running off. Oh, even the overspray of pepper spray is <coughs> really bad. It hits you right now. Yep. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. No, that sounds disgusting. So I'll get water in So they have cleared this intersection. It looks like they're getting ready to allow some fire vehicles through. We can see a fire, uh, fire employee there <coughs> in uniform watching this corner. And they are forming a line here to allow. All right, King 5's Michael Crow at around 6th and Olive, where protesters have started to smash out windows. We're going to go to Amy Marino in just a second. We've heard, Amy, that some Seattle police officers and protesters have been hit by fireworks. We don't know the extent of their injuries. But, Amy, tell us where you are and let us know what's going on. Yeah, we're right now, we are here over here in the area of 5th and Pine, and there are definitely some fireworks being set off in this area. Um, and there's still that police cruiser back there burning. Uh, some nearby shops have also had their windows broken. Somebody actually threw one of the mannequins from a store onto the burning car. Uh, and we've seen a couple of fireworks discharged over here on the street. And just to kind of give you an idea of the scene, where Michael is, is just down the way from here. You can see kind of the back of that crowd that's starting to mass up there. Uh, getting in another confrontation with the police and the rain is just starting to pour down here in downtown Seattle. Seattle police uh, are trying to manage this on several fronts. Interstate 5 southbound lane shut down right now at Seneca Street because of protesters on the interstate. And we just heard from the mayor's office. Mayor Jenny Durkin's office just let us know that a curfew is going to take effect in the city of Seattle in 15 minutes. I repeat, a curfew for the city of Seattle will take effect at 5 p.m. tonight. That means anyone on the streets of Seattle will be breaking the law as of 5.01, and you can see why. If you're just joining us, welcome to special coverage from King 5 News. I want to update you on exactly how all of this chaos started to unfold in Seattle today. It was supposed to be a day of peaceful protests. Uh, it began with uh, a protest outside of Seattle Police Headquarters just uh, outside the Amazon district. That was at noon. Uh, that rally joined another rally at Westlake Park at 3 p.m. 
That was going fine. And then right about four o'clock, uh, everything broke loose. Someone set fire to a Seattle police cruiser. It burst into flames and then another and another and another. We saw at least four Seattle police vehicles fully engulfed in flames. And uh, as you can see now, um, Seattle police just have, uh, have their hands completely full. Yeah, and, and an active scene here again. Police have, have arrived. Fire, excuse me, firefighters have arrived. Police cleared away for them into these burning cruisers. They are right up on top of these vehicles, moving one after another here to extinguish them. We're seeing bright, bla uh, like bright white, like fireworks or magnesium or something going off as they get in there. I don't know what that is, if it's just something else igniting from the heat inside, because I, I know it gets contained inside these vehicles and, and, and it's just astronomically hot. But these firefighters are right up with these vehicles that are burning for, I would say, probably the better part of a half hour at least. So we move over here to the Old Navy. Uh, they actually bashed out the windows a short time ago and people have just been going inside the store and coming out with handfuls of clothes and you can actually see clothes are just all laying all over the, the street here. If you are holding a cell phone, about a minute ago, you got this on your cell phone. This is a statewide emergency alert. The city of Seattle is asking all residents to immediately disperse from downtown. The city has imposed an immediate curfew of 5 p.m. That is from the Seattle Emergency Operations Center. So the fact that it's come from the Emergency Ops Center tells me that there are officials now gathered at the Emergency Ops Center, which is the brain center, the nerve center uh, of emergency operations in the city of Seattle. And as you can see, um, this, this situation in Seattle has become downright dangerous. It is probably total a, a three or four block scene, you know, on, on the map. Two blocks in each direction, I would say, of people that have impacted. Did you get pepper sprayed? Several times, right in the face? Right. Yeah. Were you right up here? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was down there when we were back there. It's been a couple times. Yeah. We were peacefully protesting. Nobody was being violent. They didn't tell us to disperse. They didn't give us a warning. They just opened up with pepper spray. Were you right in the they front? They keep doing this. They threw, they, threw, they threw a smoke bomb, hit my buddy right in the leg and exploded. Right there on his leg. I got hit, I got hit by the cap that comes off in the stomach. They, they cannot continue to abuse their power like this. Until the police are held accountable, none of us are free. None of us are free. And if this has to happen every single day, if this entire fucking country has to burn to the ground for us to have justice, we will have it. Of course, apologize for the language on TV. Thank you for sharing that, sir. We just saw a moment ago people were trying to break the windows here at the T-Mobile store and it doesn't appear they were successful, but I was actually here just talking with a woman named Victoria who came out here and said, you're a little frustrated with the turn of events that's happened out here. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yep, I'm more than frustrated. I'm irate. I came down here for a planned protest, peaceful, and the anarchists I feel have taken over, breaking windows, taunting the police. That, that's not what we're here for. And, and I feel like now there's a curfew, we have to leave. They hijacked our, our protest. So they were, I don't even think they know what they're, they're protesting. They just wanted a reason to break windows and taunt the police and everything else. So I'm furious. The governor's chief of staff, David Postman, is joining us on the phone right now. David, can you hear me? I can, Mark. So we just heard a few minutes ago that the governor was activating 200 members of the National Guard. Give us the latest from what the governor is doing right now. Yeah, this uh, came at the request of uh, Mayor Durkin and, and Chief Best. Um, they uh, reached out a couple of hours ago and said that uh, they felt they needed some uh, backup help. If you look at here, Mike can take a look. People are throwing things at this line of officers. Oh, that's... We're going to take a step back because they are, yeah, watch this guy on the left, right there, here it goes. This is the crowd control techniques we're seeing. He's going to throw that flashbang out and roll it at him. Oh. It's the second explosion. That's the gas. Walk with me. I don't want to be in that again. They just threw the gas back at the cops, but they have gas masks. That's what we've been seeing, guys. Watch out for that. That's going to be miserable. Let's go. Come on. So those are those gas containers, it's an irritant, it hits the back of your throat and it's just miserable. It makes you cough and gag. So that really clears out the street here. We're trying to stay a little bit upwind of that cloud here as we move back.
We're going to bring in King 5's Chris Daniels on the phone right now. Chris has decades of experience as a reporter here in Seattle. Chris, I imagine you've been watching the coverage. What's, what's going through your mind right now? Well, I'm, I'm just struck by a couple of things, Mark. Uh, you, you just heard the interview that, that Amy Moreno did with uh, one of the women that, that showed up today to peacefully protest who, who said that she feels that this is hijacked the protest and the message has been lost. And, and I think that is that is striking, that there are a lot of people that came to Seattle today to make their voices heard over uh, the death of, of, of George Floyd. And you, you've got a question uh, looking at some of the coverage from, from our crews in the field, uh, if the, these are the same people. That, that's not right. That's, that's totally not right. And Seattle Seahawk DK Metcalf uh, really saying what many people in America are feeling. You know, some people have said there's a disconnect between what happened to George Floyd and people who are stealing things out of the Helly Hansen store in downtown Seattle. And, you know, to be honest, we need to just talk about the backdrop of all of this. And that is there has been decades of racial injustice of innocent black people being killed by police officers in America. The most recent example happening in Minnesota. So we can talk about the disconnect and we can also talk about the underlying problem at the same time and is that it still exists. And I think when people are expressing their outrage, it's pretty easy to see that they're very well aware that it still exists, that racial injustice still exists in America and something needs to be done about it. We are moving up this way because we can actually see a pretty good sized plume of black smoke coming up from the corner here. We're moving up on this just to see what it is, along with a good-sized crowd as well. Oh, it is a big fire. You can see around to the right, it looks, is it a car? It is a significant fire. <clears throat> Stick with us, we're gonna move up here. Excuse me. Watch these cars, this is an open road. Mike. Hold up, sorry, there's traffic here as a car is burning. I'm just trying to make sure our photographer can cross the street safely. Mike, come here. Come here, Mike, cross the street now, please. Come on, come on. Husky, Husky. So stick with us, guys. We have just discovered, I think that's a transit supervisor truck that I actually saw driving around earlier that has been set on fire, engulfed in flames here. Uh, we're in front of the AT&T, where are we right now? Fourth and Pike. But that, this has just happened. We saw the crowd kind of run this way. We don't, we haven't seen anybody set that off. But certainly it is a huge fire going on right now and we're hearing things explode inside the vehicle. And you can't really tell anymore, but I saw that car earlier. That's a Metro Transit Supervisor SUV. So it has the look of, of a law enforcement vehicle, but actually it's, it's for Metro, as far as I remember. You can see another car over there. What looks, it's the type of car that the police drive, but it doesn't look like it's marked that has been set on fire. It's certainly these, this is an escalation from the lull we saw earlier. We've got a large group of people, most of them taking pictures and videos. Holy hell. That was an explosion coming from that transit supervisor vehicle. I just saw the bumper fly off with that explosion. And I'm seeing somebody in the AT&T store stealing chairs right now. He's walking away with a stool. We're good. Yeah, I think we're at a good distance here. We're just making sure that we're not, excuse me, too close to anything that's really popping off. We've got an ambulance coming around the corner. This is what happens I think to it's a mess. people. The scary thing here right now, though, is honestly, the traffic has not been diverted. We've been on closed streets most of the day, but if you look left here, Mike, we have traffic moving through this space. People are trying to navigate this street in between two blazing car fires and protesters are interacting with these. I mean, that's a Lyft driver you can see right there. And that guy's taking a picture out his window. Yeah, there, I mean, there's no traffic control here. It's only a couple cars, but cars are freely coming down this road that people are milling about in and cheering and crossing the road and yelling. But we have two vehicles completely engulfed right now. Uh, just here in the last couple of minutes. Again, the corner, 4th Avenue and Pine, I think. This is Pike, excuse me. We've been moving around so much. But the fires have returned. Certainly a lot of people here celebrating. 
the destruction of these government-owned vehicles. And what we don't see here again is police. Police were really forming up a solid presence about a block back where we were, but we have not seen them here. We've got the fire department here without a law enforcement escort as they received in other places. But it looks like they're getting ready to move in. People are starting to run off. This is what happens. Certainly, certainly the chaos is back. We had a lull there for a little bit. It was very calm for about an hour and a half. Uh, but now we're, we're back at it. As for how these cars were lit on fire, I could not speak to that because we just didn't see it. We were down the block. Oh, that was look left. It's the other cars just exploded. And then if you look further left, we've got, uh, it's, that's a sheriff tactical vehicle that's right down there. You see it? You see that? So sheriff is trying to move a tactical vehicle in and we've got teams of law enforcement on bikes that are pushing their way in. And then they're working to extinguish to the right here. They just got on top of this one. They're pulling a line while hosing it down. But we have not seen police make it to the scene here yet. Stick with me, we're gonna see how this develops. I am just struck too by the number of people that are here to to kind of take pictures and, and selfies and and smiling selfies with burning vehicles. It is it is surreal. People often come to observe crime scenes, but I've never seen anything like this. And this is going to be a big push, I would imagine, from police. That's an SPD bike squad, two tactical vehicles behind them. I would expect them to, they're going to be forming a line to keep people back from the fire now. So the one car is out that the fire department has reached. Let's make sure we're not in kind of no man's land here. We don't want to be the first ones in line here when this goes down. So Michael, let me ask you, it's, it's hard to tell, Michael, where police are and where protesters are with, with the number of people simply ignoring the curfew at this point. Uh, how, how big is the scope of this problem right now? Is it, is it, can you tell from where you are? Yeah, I mean, it, it has certainly gotten more centralized than it was. Go, 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 excuse me. Hold on, hold on, keep going, move, move. We're getting thrown flashbangs right where we're standing there, so we're moving off. There is a no man's land right here. You can see police are pushing them back that way. I mean, that's where the protesters are, and they're gonna get pushed. You see this guy with the rifle moving in to fire more. Watch this guy. I think those are bullets. Oh, we're right in the gas here. We're moving, but I'll keep talking to you. So we saw that guy firing non-lethal rounds, kind of chasing folks off. This guy's pushing us back. There's a line of police herding us down. I'm with you, I'm watching your back. Just keep watching. Lots of tear gas. We gotta go. Yes, sir, we're moving. So we have turned, because <coughs> we are fully, <coughs> oh God, it's miserable. We are fully in the cloud of gas right now. Hits the back of your throat. Watch this pull pair. <laughs> that was a very strong push that we saw there, the more than we've seen most of today. People are throwing stuff back at the cops, but there's completely a cloud that we're in. Stick with us, just give me a second here. It's miserable. They've pushed people entirely back from the intersection where those two cars were burning. A lot of gas. I saw non lethal what looked like it, kind of, a, what looks like a rifle, but you can tell he was firing to kind of hit them, chase them off. We're gonna keep going, our photographer is coughing and I, my face is burning. More explosions from up there. I mean, look at that surreal image though, the public market sign, surrounded by smoke and gas and this tactical presence in downtown Seattle. It's, honestly, it's unreal. There's another firecracker. So to your original question, it appears to be, excuse me, hold on. We gotta keep moving, this gas is drifting with us. All right, I'm gonna jump in here. King 5's <clears throat> Michael Crow on Pike Street as you're looking toward the water at the iconic Pike Place Market sign. Uh, several more car fires just set. Um, police forming lines trying to get the protesters to to disperse and uh, 
So it's kind of like a game of whack-a-mole at this point. So 8 o'clock straight up right now. We've been on the air for about four hours. I'm Mark Wright. Welcome to special coverage on King 5 News of what started as a day of protests in Seattle and ended in fires and riots and arrests and looting in the retail district in downtown Seattle. So right now, as we speak, a civil emergency has been declared for the city of Seattle by the mayor. A curfew is in place until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. That means unless you're working in Seattle, you can't be in Seattle on the streets right now. It's gotten that bad. A little bit ago, uh, Seattle's Mayor Jenny Durkin held a news conference with uh, her office, uh, with the Seattle Police Department office and the fire department, all talking about what happened today. We're going to play that press conference for you in its entirety so that you can get a better feel for exactly where we stand right now. Thank you for joining us today on such short notice. I want to first thank Police Chief Carmen Best, who could not be with us because she is at West Precinct commanding response. Well, tonight's destruction and looting happened as downtown businesses are struggling with closures prompted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's John Scholes with the Downtown Seattle Association. We're in the middle of the deepest economic crisis since the Great Depression in Seattle. So the damage, the looting uh, is putting uh, the livelihood and lives of uh, our fellow Seattleites uh, in, in jeopardy. We're going to leave you in just about 45 seconds. So I wanted to recap what has happened in Seattle today. The good news is no one, at least we haven't heard of anyone being seriously hurt or killed in today's rioting in downtown Seattle, but a number of cars were set on fire. A curfew is in effect right now until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. And also 200 members of the Washington National Guard are heading into Seattle as we speak to help keep the peace. Thank you for joining us for this coverage that began at 4 p.m. tonight. I'm Mark Wright. Our coverage continues at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. See you then.